Good afternoon. When is this pandemic going to end? We endured nearly two months of total shutdown, starting from sometime in the end of March to sometime in the beginning of May. And I don't know about you, but those weeks just felt like I was living in a giant fog. So it was wonderful when the restrictions started to lift and we thought we were on the downward side of the curve and soon we'd be able to put this whole thing behind us. And then the number of cases started to rise, the number of positive tests started to rise, the number of hospitalizations started to rise, the number of deaths started to rise, and we started to see some of the restrictions being reimposed upon us. And just a brief public service announcement, please follow the guidelines of wearing a mask and social distancing and the rest because this is the way we can help keep businesses and churches and other public spaces open. Not to mention, this is a way that we can save lives. Now, I suspect there are some people who don't wanna follow these guidelines because we just don't wanna go back into that giant fog that we lived through this past spring. We would rather believe that this is all over in spite of the evidence against that. Now, you can hardly blame people for wanting this all to be behind us and hoping that it is and allowing that hope to become belief that it is all over because what's our alternative? If we don't think that we put it behind us, then we get this sense that this pandemic is just gonna keep going on for who knows how long and we won't be able to see an end in sight. In other words, we are living in danger of losing our sense of hope. Recently, I was part of a Zoom meeting with uh, other pastors in our presbytery. And for those of you who aren't Presbyterian, a presbytery is the association of churches in a particular region. Now, one of the pastors in our, this group commented about something he learned when he was training to serve as a soldier in Vietnam. As part of his training before their deployment, they were taught how to handle themselves if they were captured and became a prisoner of war. A World War II veteran who had been a POW spoke to them about that experience. And he told them, and decades later, these words were powerful enough that he still held them in his heart. He said that the most important thing to have at a time like that, when you're captured and living in a POW camp, the most important thing to have at a time like that is hope. And he said that there were those who were in the camp who lost hope and that just didn't make it. He emphasized to these Vietnam recruits that hope was what would keep them alive. And those are good words for us. We cannot succumb to the despair that this COVID pandemic will never end that we will live in this mask-wearing, social distancing, group-sized limiting purgatory forever. And I certainly don't want to compare what we're going through now with what people going through a prisoner of war camp have to endure. It's night and day, but this is still bad enough. But hope is what will get us through this. It's what will keep us alive. It is what will help us make wise decisions. Hope is what will keep our spirits from being beaten down. Well, that's all well and good, isn't it? Hope is what we need, okay. But you need an object of hope. You need something to hope for. Hope is not simply just, ah, things are gonna get better, but why? What is our reason for having hope? Now, the world is placing hope in things like vaccines or herd immunity or medication that will be developed, and that's all very good. And we're certainly all hoping and praying that that will be the case. But as people of faith, the source of our hope comes from something far greater, or maybe I should say from someone far greater. The Vietnam veteran pastor who was part of the Zoom meeting went on to quote Psalm 119, verses 49 and 50. Psalm 119, 49 and 50. Remember your word to your servant, for you have given me hope. My comfort in my suffering is this, your promise preserves my life. 
I don't know what kind of suffering the psalmist was enduring, but truer words could never be spoken for what we are going through now. God's word gives us hope, the hope, the word that he will always love us, that he will always care for us, he will always be here for us. We find comfort in that promise, comfort and assurance that will keep us alive. I don't know how God is going to deliver us from this pandemic. I don't know how much more suffering we will go through or even how much more death will happen until God delivers us. But I do know one thing for sure. God has spoken his promise to us, and that promise is our gateway to hope. This pandemic will come to an end one way or another. And in the meantime, we have God's promise to help us endure and to help us to live in hope. Let us pray. Lord God, in times of suffering and in times of difficulty, we are grateful for your promise, for your word which sustains us and gives us hope. So in this time that we're living in now, Lord, keep us from living in a sense of false hope, or believing the lies or the deceit, deceit that will send us astray. Help us to make wise decisions. Help us to watch for what you are doing. And help us to not just cling to, but to stand firm upon the hope that you give us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk again later.